Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones from astrobackyard.com and this is the Skywatcher Star Adventurer Pro camera mount. It's called a camera mount, but really you can mount longer telephoto lenses and even a small telescope to a celestial tracking mount like this. The way it works essentially, it has an internal motor that rotates with the speed of the movement of the night sky to take long exposure astrophotography images. Now, if you've seen me talk about star trackers before, this is nothing new. The Star Adventure Pro is one of many popular star trackers on the market, this one being perhaps the most popular. In this video, I'm gonna go over what I like about this mount, what I don't like about this mount. This mount was sent to me directly from Skywatcher after watching my star tracker video and realizing that I didn't talk about this mount. So hopefully you guys can appreciate that. So the first thing I'll say right now is that what you're looking at right now is in the ball head adapter mount mode. What I mean by that is I've attached a ball head adapter to the RA axis of the mount and now I can actually move it around wherever I want to point it. Wide angle shots of the night sky using a wide angle lens like this on a DSLR. When you need to put more weight on the mount, you can actually attach the L bracket, the fine tuning mount assembly they call it. And it's probably my favorite feature of the mount overall. So I'll show you what that looks like next. So it's this guy right here. And this is gonna slide right into, this dovetail is gonna slide right into the mount base. So when you're using the mount in this mode, if you have the Pro Pack, you get this counterweight shaft and a counterweight. So obviously right now it's not balanced at all because it's very bottom heavy. But then you can attach a telescope to the declination plate here or your camera or ball head adapter, whatever you want. Uh, but either way, you have more options because you can balance the load better. So it's, this is the option you want if you're going to mount a small telescope. The wedge base on the mount now I've used a number of star trackers before and the Ioptron Skyguider Pro was probably my favorite mount going into the, the Star Adventurer here. And I'll say that the base is very similar. It's nothing special. You can release this lock here and then it becomes very loose to control the altitude adjustment of the mount. So up and down here we're at my location. I'm pointing at 43 degrees north to hit the pole star Polaris you can actually tighten up the tension and I recommend tightening it up even as you're moving it. It's gonna be very stiff, but you need the whole thing to be solid and stable. If it's shaking around the slightest breeze or just focusing the camera, it's gonna knock things around and that's what you don't want. Stability is everything. Like I said, this base isn't anything special, but it is possible to get it nice and secure. It's very similar to the experience I had with the Skyguider. One of the key differences though is the azimuth controls so side to side there's some nice bolts to control that but to tighten it down you're going to need an allen key to actually tighten these screws down to really stiffen it up so i recommend having kind of the sweet spot where it's tight enough where it's secure but you can still make fine adjustments as you're polar aligning the mount again like the skyguider pro there's this ra clutch lock and so basically all that does is you loosen it and then you can position the the angle that you need and lock it down and it will stay there and then of course when you turn the mount on it starts tracking so that's kind of nice and i'll say that the the clutch on the star adventure feels a little more solid than the one on the sky guider speaking of turning the mount on and tracking i'll show you the mode dial where you select the tracking speed that you want so right here you can see the mode dial where i can actually click it on right now because there's batteries in it and i'll talk about that in a minute but the main mode you're gonna to wanna to use is the celestial tracking mode or the one time speed. And that's gonna match the rotation of the night sky as long as you're polar aligned and balanced nicely for long exposure images of one, two, three minutes, depending on the focal length you're using. Now, the only problem with this design, and I'm not gonna lie, I first saw this from Peter Zelenka in his detailed review of Star Trackers. He's, he's got some great stuff online, is that he brought up a great point it is, would be very easy to knock this mode dial switch on in your camera bag while traveling or just even jostled around in the car. And then of course you've got that, those batteries getting eaten up while you're driving to the dark sky area. So if there was a way to lock this mode dial in position, that would be beneficial for the next design. But as it stands right now, you gotta be really careful with it. 
Speaking of the tracking speeds though, it's got a ton of them. Uh, seven to be exact. One, two, three, four. Yeah, seven. The eighth is the off position. What's really cool about that, so for people shooting, you know, wide angle nightscape style astrophotography, a lot of the stuff that's popular on Instagram right now, they're shooting a wide angle lens, getting the Milky Way over some mountains and some beautiful scenery. In those situations, you can use something called the half speed mode. So you get the benefits of tracking the stars slightly, but you don't blur the foreground and the terrestrial details a whole lot. So that's great for taking maybe a 30 second or 60 second exposure, depending on the focal length, a great option to have. And then there's lunar tracking, solar tracking. They're slightly different speeds, so you can actually stay on those targets longer, not something I use a whole lot. But what's really cool is the six times and 12 times speeds that you can use. So what I've been looking around online because I've started doing time lapses. I'm looking for something like basically a glorified egg timer. So I can set the camera up and take a five minute or 10 minute video with the camera panning across slowly. So you get the motion and the time lapse having it at the same time. It's a nice effect. So using that 12 times speed, it does a full revolution in four hours. So it's moving along pretty quick, a lot faster than just a celestial tracking rate. So you can actually adjust the altitude base. So this is just sitting flat horizontal to take a side panorama or you know time-lapse video using that 12 times speed. So kind of dual purpose there. Uh, you think, might think to yourself, why would you want it tracking at 12 times speed? That's not gonna track the night sky at all, but that's what you use it for. Uh, I think that's why they call it like this a multi-function mount. So the battery pack comes off here and I've only, there we go. There it is. So there's four AA batteries in here, which is an interesting choice to say the least. It sucks because it's not a rechargeable lie poly battery like you find in some of the other star trackers. But what's good about it, it's kind of practical if you think about it. You're never gonna be stuck with a dead uncharged mount because you can always go buy batteries anywhere, no matter where you are in some remote location. Uh, you can generally find batteries in a lot of places or just bring extra so you'll, you'll know that you'll never be without power. And uh, the batteries are said to last about 72 hours. Uh, I haven't changed them since after using it for three or four nights now. So uh, they're, you know, it's a, it's a pretty convenient option actually when you think about it. The design of the mount, the polar finder scope, in the back, that's very typical of these star trackers. It's high quality, you can focus it. It looks directly through the mount. Uh, if you've got the dovetail, the uh, fine tuning mount assembly shown here, you can still look right through the mount and polar align it with uh, the North Celestial or South Celestial pole. With this mount, I just do it manually using a polar finder app on my phone just to tell me the current position Polaris should be in. My favorite feature of this mount by far, and this was a huge upgrade and kind of the reason why I'm gonna be reaching for this star tracker first when I have a couple of other options to choose from, and that's this very smooth and robust declination bracket. You can see this little knob here. You can turn this and rotate the camera in the declination side to side or telescope in a very precise way. I'll throw a telescope on here now so you can see what I mean. So the payload capacity of the Star Adventure Pro pack with the counterweight kit here, the fine tuning mount assembly, the L bracket shown here is 11 pounds. So a small refractor like this is three and a half pounds. This is the Red Cat 51 with the DSLR attached, it brings me around five pounds, and I can shoot at 250 millimeter focal length successfully on the Star Adventure Pro. It's a great fit for it. I'll share some images taken with this exact setup at the end of the video. So what I love about this declination bracket, it's very secure and easy to lock the telescope down. So I just find the, the mount on the, the bottom of the dovetail of the telescope that locks down so secure on the rubber padded base of the declination bracket. So you really feel like the, your expensive telescope is locked down and secure or you know, high-end camera lens, which is really important to have that reassurance when you're you know, shooting in the dark with this gear. When I talked about this fine adjustment knob for declination, watch what happens here. As you can see, I'm turning the telescope and pointing it to where I want it as opposed to some of the other designs I've used where you simply unlock the knob, move it freely and lock it back down. 
This is a huge improvement of the design, the fine tuning knob, and it makes framing up objects in the night sky with a non-go-to mount like this so much easier. You can kind of, you know, take your test frame, do a slight adjustment, use the live view screen, seeing those stars move slowly. It's just a, it's a huge plus for this mount and something I wasn't prepared for. Another great thing about the design for this L bracket is that you can slide it up and down, obviously. So let's say you, you're not balanced with the counterweight up and down at this point, all of a sudden you slide it down to this position and let's see, so we're a little bit top heavy still. Slide the dovetail bar down slightly. So it's very easy to achieve a balance even with a kind of a demanding rig like this. So using the ball head adapter with a small, with a DSLR and, and lightweight lens is fine or even better on the fine tuning mount assembly as they call it. You'll mount this star tracker on a tripod. You, you really wanna have a stable, secure tripod. I'm using kind of a middle of the road one from Amazon that's a, an aluminum tripod and uh, it's, it works well enough. Probably best if I hang a weight from the bottom of it because like I said, you don't want any shakiness to the mountain. The shaking you're seeing right now is the tripod, not the mount itself. Everything feels very secure. Ah, so what I don't like about the mount. The biggest downfall, and it was funny to see the comments uh, in my latest post that a lot of people felt the same way. So the Polar Finder scope is fine. It works just great. It's just as good as any of the other ones I've used, but it comes with this external clip-on light illuminator. So sometimes it's nice in the dark to, you know, light it up as red and actually see um, you know, see the reticle easier and the, the clock so you can make those fine adjustments. To use this illuminator, you have to clip it onto the front. And when you've got this bracket, you can't do that. So you actually need to polar align before this assembly is on and clip this rather silly looking device onto the front. It just clips into the hole and then it puts this little light in there so you've actually illuminated the polar scope. It works fine, the, the functionality is fine. The problem is I'm gonna lose this thing 100%. There's no way I'm not gonna lose this thing in a few years time. It's just gonna get lost in the mix and I'm not gonna end up using it. Whereas some of the other ones, the light's built in to the mount itself, turns on when the mount is on. So this is not great. Just a few last things to mention about this mount just so I've covered everything. Uh, it does include some time-lapse modes and a, a snap cable to do time-lapse photography controlled through the mount. It's not something I would ever do with a mount like this. I prefer to shoot either with a, an intervalometer or a remote shutter release cable, run my sequences there. The other thing is you can actually power it with a mini USB cable. There is uh, a port for that if you don't want to use the batteries, but of course then you're losing some of the portability of the mount. So. I like in my star trackers it to be completely portable. I mean, it's on right now, set it up wherever I want, grab and go and uh, start imaging. So all in all, the Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro, nice fit and finish, nice feel, a lot of metal parts and really affordable, all things considered, especially if you're someone that was a photographer entering the world of astrophotography and then you realize that the tracking is the key to everything, then you can use less aggressive settings and take advantage of, of, of different lenses, different focal lengths and get these deep sky objects. So a Star Tracker in general is an amazing device and the Star Adventure Pro is one you should definitely consider. If you found this video useful, please like it and leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked about it or where I went wrong. And until next time, clear skies. So what you're looking at here is the Rudy. Are you gonna come sit down here with me, buddy? Here, you gotta lay down. Those paws are so loud. Lay down, buddy. Lay down, okay? You can watch. That's a good boy, you stay there. Hi everyone, this is Trevor Jones.